What's going on, everyone? It's your guy, Cole Jackson, back with another episode of The Film Room, brought to you by our friends over at the Flavor Cupcake Cream Bake Shop, Hartford County's sweetest bake shop, and the winners of Season 4 of Cupcake Wars on the Food Network, so you know they're legit. Flavor specializes in freshly baked cupcakes and many other sweet treats, as well as La Colombe coffee and espresso drinks. Drop the link down below. Be sure to check them out. What is going on, everyone? Uh, fun week. We got to get some Ben Cleveland film. Uh, we've all been waiting for it. I know you guys have been eager. I'm super excited to jump into it. Um, a little bit of an overall impression. I thought, um, you know, in the totality of his game, I thought it was an upgrade over Ben Powers. I thought he played extremely well for his first full start. Um, as we're going to see here today, there's definitely some things to work on, some things that we've seen issues with before. If you go back to my preseason and, uh, I think it was the first or second week when I did a breakdown of Powers versus Cleveland when they were rotating snaps. Um, you know, the big issue is some of his uh, some of his run blocking, but in pass protection, which we're going to look at at the end, uh, I thought his pass protection was really good. Uh, some minor tweaks that I think he's going to work on, but overall, I uh, thought he was an improvement. Super, super solid pass protection game. Didn't allow a pressure. Um, so that obviously very positive. Uh, yes, the ball was coming out quicker with Tyler Huntley at the helm, but it doesn't matter. His reps were clean, look strong. Uh, he did face low competition in the sense that uh, they were missing their best interior uh, defensive lineman. And the guy he was matched up on, you, you obviously, obviously have to contextualize that in, but, you know, he plays in front. And you can't take that away from him. Uh, so we're going to actually start with his run blocking and kind of take a look at what I think he needs to work on. Um and you guys are, if you guys have listened to me talk about him before, um, you know, I've been, I've gotten a reputation as being a little bit down on him and it's really not, uh, it's not really that I'm down on him. It's just that I think he gets mislabeled a little bit. Um, and that is because I see him get referred to as a mauler, um, someone that finishes guys. I don't see him doing him doing it consistently. He didn't in preseason when he did play. He didn't in his first couple of weeks when he was rotating with Powers. Um, he didn't on his college film. And you know, you you guys can go back, read Lance Zerlin, read anyone from the draft network, read some of Brandon Thorne's stuff. Uh, it was a pretty consistent criticism of his game was his lack of finish. And so that brings us to the first part of what we're going to look at. Again, two videos here. We're going to look at some of his run blocks, then look at some of his pass blocks and. So what I did was I pulled about five clips where um, he didn't finish his guy, didn't run through his block, stops his feet. We'll take a look at it, what happened. And, uh, you know, the, the, the good thing is that I think this issue is I, it's identifiable and it's fixable. And so those two things are obviously very important anytime you're trying to fix a problem. Uh, but, you know, it's disappointing to me that we haven't kind of seen it improve. And I guess what worries me is you can't, you know, you can't coach mentality. You can bring it out of guys. You can do your best to do it. It's it's a personal decision. Like he needs to come out and decide he wants to be the big country nasty player that he can be. Um, he's huge. He's got the strength. You can see it. Um, he's actually pretty technical. I, I, I was pretty impressed with his ability to create leverage on a lot of the blocks I'm going to show you. So the things I want you guys to look at uh, with me is stops driving his feet, stops driving through his block. And one thing I think we're going to see out of this is what that does is even if it's a, a block away from where the ball direction is going. So he's lined up at left guard, say it's a right, uh, a run to the right side of the offensive line, his guy, because you're not finishing and driving hit you, the guy escapes from your, from your block. Right. And then, you know, we're going to see on one of these plays, his guy ends up making a chase down tackle. So it, it was a consistent problem. And again, I'm going to show you at the end where he did drive through his guy. It's not that he doesn't do it. He can't do it. It's that he doesn't do it consistently. And like my guy, Michael Crawford always says, you're always chasing consistency in this game. So, you know, let's take a look at it. Let's get right into it. I'm using a new video player. I, I, I've been told that my video was lagging. It was kind of choppy for you guys. So I'm trying this new video player. We'll see if it works. Um, so let's get into the first play. So perfect example right here. Let's get into the end zone angle. I think this is just inside zone to the left. So he's going to engage 96. And so right there, I think he creates good leverage. He's low. See now right here, 
I think he's got, you know, he's a little high. Well, one thing I didn't talk about up front was his stiffness. He is very stiff. We all know that. It's going to be tough for him to fix that uh, from preseason. And now I didn't really have high expectations that that would be fixed. That's more something that I need to see him do in the off season. Um, it really, like, it sounds like a joke, but it's not yogis, Pil- or yogis, yoga, Pilates, all that kind of stuff is literally what he needs to do. Um, we've seen a guy like Devin Duvernay, who is a little bit more stiff for a wide receiver. He's become so much more fluid this year. So, I mean, hopefully they're working out doing, doing, doing the yogas together, uh, <laughs> together this off season. But what, what, what I think here, what I want you guys to look at is where he stops driving his feet. And so see how he's just not driving there. And then, sorry, I went back too far. I think that's the main issue. It's like he, he hits his engagement point. He hits his strike. He creates leverage. And if you guys follow Duke Mayweather, who's, you know, one of the best personal coaches in the NFL right now, he works with a lot of top guys, a lot of top draft prospects. He kind of has a four, four prong system to what, when he coaches and he says, strike leverage drive finish and i think what cleveland does so well um on a lot of these is he you know he has the strike he creates the leverage like we see right here good hand strike you know he's got leverage there all he needs to do is drive through 96s inside shoulder and that's it's it's the drive and the finish where see he's just not driving him that's a block where I want to see him run right through his shoulder and turn him into a sled. And we just don't see it there. Um, consistent problem in this game. We'll see it again on these next couple of reps. There he is aligned here. This one I think is a down block. Yeah, it's a down block. And see how 93 comes out. So this is again where your guy can kind of escape your block if you don't finish him. But again, creates good. Uh, he's going to... so. Power, power to the left. So he, him, and Villanueva are the uh, guys that you're running behind. You're gonna have Tomlinson, I believe, come down crack forty, and then Zietler's gonna be the lead block. Uh, so Cleveland's coming down to crack the nose tackle, the zero tech here. Villanueva is gonna hit ninety eight. So there, like that's good leverage. See his helmet. His helmet's on the uh, that would be the outside of ninety three, away from the play good leverage. You kind of have the power there. What he needs to do is drive. Now with this one, I did want to say uh, 98's foot position here can be a little bit tougher because he's running out of real estate. So that's just a context piece where I was a little bit easier on him with that because I mean, he only has so much real estate to actually move him, but he just, again, his feet aren't moving and 93 comes out. 93 doesn't make the tackle, but it's that kind of consistent issue, right? He's not driving through the shoulder. And I believe this is another down block. Yeah, so same idea. Zeitler's going to come down. I think Duvernay's purpose here is to try and pull this defensive end out. Zeitler ends up cracking. And so there, his guy does make the tackle. So let's watch this one, because this one was one that I was a little bit more harsh on. So uh, similar formation to what we just saw. Uh, Packers are playing tight. They got a zero tech. So there didn't like his leverage as much here. Again, remember I focused on that last play with his head being on the outside shoulder. He's on the inside here. So that also plays a role, but he's just not moving him, right? Like he and 90 93 is a big dude, but you know, this Mahler Mahler skill set that we want to see come out, his feet stop again. Same consistent problem. His feet aren't even moving there. Um you know, and then his, he gets shed. So that's how you can lose that kind of leverage that you create. I didn't think he created good leverage there. I think he's got to have that head on the other shoulder and he's got to drive through him. Freeman should be kind of going off his butt and off filling away his butt um, to, to, to find that open gap. But uh, you know, again, consistent problem, his feet stop as soon as he hits the contact point. And that's where he kind of loses all of his power and his ability to drive guys, turn them into sleds. Um, so, you know, we've seen it a few times now. Check this play from the... Let's see, so his guy makes a tackle again. So this is, a, again, what I'm saying. His guy, his guy isn't beating him like he did on the last play. He's escaping out of the back of his block. So I just want to double-check the play call here. It's another power, so they're running power to the left. They did this quite consistently in this game. If you guys remember 2019, they ran a lot of power to the right and ran it behind Yonda and Villanueva with Bozeman as the puller. That's where he got dubbed the 
the great puller of the NFL. Um, but in this game, they did a lot of uh, power to the left. I think they wanted to run behind Cleveland. You put them in those situations to be a damn blocker. They did run more gap in this game. So it was, you know, it wasn't just power to the left, power to the right too. Um, I think Cleveland pulled a number of times, um, missed his guy on a few of them, but uh, you know, he was hitting someone. It just wasn't always the right guy. Um, so uh same ideas we saw in these last two plays he's just kind of man upping this guy and driving him through and so again leverage is created and he loses it because he's not driving his feet let's go back and see that see him at the initial contact point so again he's going at the guy over top of uh over top of or he's in the one tech sorry so he's in the a gap in between cleveland and bozeman cleveland's gonna strike See that head I want on that shoulder, good leverage. Now I need him driving through that left, like to Cleveland's left, and he needs to just drive through that shoulder. His feet aren't moving at all. Like he just isn't driving his feet. Consistent problem. This is probably the best example of what I'd like to see him work on because he get he does get shed, but then his, his guy makes the, makes the tackle from a chase down, and he's just not driving, just not driving. And then 96 jumps on or 95. So, you know, that rep is a perfect example of something I think he needs to work on. This one, I think he just misses his strike. Yeah, so this is almost like a, an ISO lead concept where you're going to get the double from Bozeman and Zeitler. Cleveland's going to man up, and then Tomlinson's going to be kind of the lead blocker up through. Uh, Bozeman comes off. See, and he just doesn't get the he just doesn't get the leverage there. So not necessarily the same issue, um, but you know, similar run blocking issues. So he's just going to man him up. Uh, heads on the right shoulder. So I mean. He's driving his feet a little, but he gets a little bit of a narrow base. And you guys have heard me say before, everything starts in your base. See how he kind of narrows up there, tries to turn him. But he's not, like, kind of once he turns him, he doesn't drive through that shoulder. So same kind of concept. It's really his drive block where he's losing uh, some of these reps and, and not able to sustain his blocks. And so here we go. Now we get a little bit of a better. Okay, so this one is where he did do it. And he actually ends up finishing his guy, takes him to the ground. And so this is what I was saying. I shared this tweet yesterday. and uh, Or I didn't share this clip. I talked about it and someone else shared the clip. Uh, our good friend Reading Raptor uh, at Austria Raven, if I have it correct. Uh, big shout out to him. He's a great follower. Um, he shared the clip. And, and this is where I think you could look at it and say, well, look, he finished his guy. And that's the thing about breaking down film. You really have to look at the total picture. You got to show both sides. I'm not going to sit here and say Cleveland never finishes. He never does drive blocks, that sort of thing. That wouldn't be honest. But he doesn't do it consistently. But this is what it can look like. So right there, good, like, out, outstanding burst out of his block really impressive there and then see how he's driving his feet he's got him in the vice grips he drives his feet puts him on the ground as he tries to chase out of his block that's what i'm saying so we've seen him on the on a few now where a guy can kind of run out behind him because he's not drive blocking he's not driving his feet if you're getting blocked as a defensive lineman and you turn to start running the other direction of the runner if i'm drive blocking you I'm, you should have no power because you're kind of disengaging me. But when you're not drive blocking me and you're just kind of have your hands up, I'm easy. I'm just running right out. And so this is where, as he turned to chase, Cleveland is driving. Therefore, he finishes him. Uh, so perfect example here of what it can look like, what he can get to doing consistently. Um, and then I want to show this uh, because a lot of people were saying like, oh, I just saw Bozeman, you know, maul a guy. He looks great. Um, I think they did this early. Uh, this clip's actually from the first quarter. Um, they created a lot of opportunities for him to drive block with Bozeman in a combination block. And, you know, this is a good example of where he does drive his feet. It's a double team with Bozeman, so it's not like anything that needs to be a highlight. Uh, but, you know, again, you can see kind of his technique here. They're going to double up uh, the, the two tech here. And see how he's just constantly driving his feet, moves him, you know, five yards. 
So that's kind of what I think he can get to. He just needs to start building that consistency. And then we're going to pop up some of his pass protection where I think he did the bulk of his great work in this game. I'm going to actually start with uh, one of the more negative plays because I think it highlights – this is pretty nitpicky in terms of a criticism, but you know, I like to try and find something that these guys can work on. Um, and I think what he was doing in this game that uh, he needs to work on was he was giving up too much depth in his pass set. So what that, you know, what I, the reason I think he's doing it is because, you know, it's his first start. He's probably a little bit worried about the NFL speed. Um, he hasn't played in a while, so he's going to give up a little bit more depth and he's going to lean on his anchor as his margin of error. Um, and it worked quite well early on. And then what I noticed was defensive tackles that were lined up on him. They probably read it because he wasn't mixing up his sets. He was taking a lot of guard vertical set where he's kind of sitting back, letting the guys come to him. And then he's kind of popping them, hitting a strike, sitting down on his anchor. Um, but what was happening is guys were just straight up bull rushing him, And that's when you start to get guards pushed back on the quarterback's lap. So it wasn't a huge uh, impact in this game. I think a lot of that was Huntley getting the ball out so quickly, but it is something that I don't think he's going to get away with every game. So this is a play that kind of shows an example of what I'm talking about. And then we'll look at some of his really clean reps. So see how he gets driven back into Huntley. Again, it's not a pressure. It wasn't a negative pass rushing attempt. It was just one of the one of the plays I could find where it shows it. Um, so 94 is going to come right at him. He's going to give him some space. He sits back. And you can kind of see there, like, he's losing his body control because it's straight bull rush. So ball came out, no negative pass rush event. All is well in the world. But something that, you know, I think you can lean on your anchor when you're a guy as strong as Cleveland. Don't get me wrong. When you start doing that a little bit too much, again, you lose your margin of error. It's kind of like the length conversation. The, the big thing about length, long arms for offensive linemen is it creates that margin of error. You can play um, guys a little bit deeper, a little bit further away to try and focus on your footwork to, to keep a mirror with them. And then you can hit your punch later because you have that longer length. You have a little bit more margin for error. Same idea with anchor. Um you know, you can give guys a little bit of real estate because I'm I trust that I'm strong enough to sit back into my anchor, drop my hips, and, and absorb their contact. So, um, but he he had a really clean day in pass protection. So we're gonna look at some really nice examples. Like he's just got vice grips on this guy. Um, let's get into the end zone angle. So right over here, 94 line up as a two I. And what I like here at the end of this rep, uh, we talked a little about the pocket. The pocket's basically um, like a semicircle. And what I like is he kind of gets his head back across to 94 and keeps 94 uh, with inside leverage. And so what that means is he's going to kind of let him come in, let him work up field, but work out field up outside of his shoulder rather than inside. And then as he gets to that point, he starts to kind of push him out of the back of the pocket, um, you know, towards where his other guys are what we don't want to see. And what I think powers had a lot of problems was he would lose inside leverage a lot. And that creates a shorter path to the quarterback. We always want to work guys out of the back of the pocket because it allows the quarterback to step up. Uh, you know, it's obvious for tackles. That's what they're doing. I think you don't see it as much with guards, but I like the nuance by Cleveland there to kind of adjust his leverage mid rep and work him towards the outside, uh, outside shoulder. So I thought that was a really well done rep, had the vice grips, good, strong anchor, good hand grip, uh, you know, clean rep, very clean rep. And I think this is, yeah, this, he said a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, a little bit more shallow here and he gets his hands on him early. Cleveland has pretty good length. So I, I like how he can do this and he uses his strength right away. So it's a bit more of a quick set. And again, he creates that leverage. He's got a very good posture here. The only thing I didn't like, but he kind of, he recovers well from it. I think he said a little bit too inside on him. And when I'm talking about creating that outside lever or that inside leverage to force him outside. Um, but you can see it here. He starts to drive him out of the back of the pocket. So if Huntley needs to read that, say he needs a little bit more time, he would step up in between this gap right here over the Ravens logo. And Cleveland knows enough to push him out of the back of the pocket. That's a really well nuanced thing. Something I don't see powers do enough. Again, I think he loses inside too often. He doesn't have the type of strength that, that uh, Cleveland has. Nice catch by Andrews. Um, really like that rep from him. And then this last one, uh, there was a few examples I could have pulled. I didn't want to overwhelm with, with clips here, 
what I think he did really well that needs a lot of a lot of credit given his lack of experience was how well he processed rushers. So you'll see if he was uncovered on a pass rush step, his eyes are scanning, he's finding work. Um, he's making the right reads on guys when he's uncovered, he passed off blocks really well. So here he's going to have the linebacker lined up over top of him who doesn't come. And you see it right there. See that quick inside scan. Um, super, super important to have. I think the Ravens could do some good things with helping Villanueva with Cleveland. If, if Cleveland continues to play as soon as he doesn't come, he sees it reads inside, gives the help. Uh, you know, again, balls coming in so quick, it's hard to do much with these pass rush set or pass, uh, pass protection snaps. But a good example of what I'm talking about when we look at his processing again, a number of clips I could have pulled. Overall, super solid day in pass protection. Um, overall, a good day. Um, I, I think you you kind of I the broader takeaway that I want people to have is you know, things he needs to fix but things that I think are identifiable and fixable. And so I think that's, what's really important. Um, you know, I, I think he's going to, he's got potential. Like he's got a lot of potential. Got People are down on him. He played, you know, through a couple of injuries. You're a little bit worried about kind of, you know, is our injury is going to be a factor for him throughout his career. Um, I think those are all reasonable concerns, but in terms of a first full start, a first full, you know, slate of snaps, I think you have to be, feel pretty good about his day. I think what he's going to take away uh, from the overall volume of his snaps and pass protection is he needs to be a little bit more uh, strategic with his pass sets. Because like I said, I think he set too deep too often and pass rushers adjusted to it. And I didn't see a big adjustment from Cleveland. So what I let, would have liked to have seen is if guys are going to kind of hit you with that bull rush, quick set them and get the, your hands on them quick, absorb the contact because if they're locked into a bull rush and you have the strength that Cleveland has, you stunt them at the line of scrimmage. You're just sitting down and engaging your anchor. You get the vice grips. They can't rip swim out of that as easily. Um, so I would have liked to see that. I think that's something he can do moving forward. Um, and in the run game, I mean, it sounds simple uh, when, when you create your leverage, drive your legs, finish that guy, um, you know, bring out that Marshall Yonda in them. Uh, I don't know what they have to do. We were joking. Maybe they have to, you know, take away a squirrel so he can't eat them. I really don't know. Um, they got to find a way to piss big country off. Uh, overall, great day from Ben Cleveland. You guys as Ravens fans should feel pretty good. This guy's got a lot of potential. Um, pretty fun guy too. Fun to watch. Um you know, just got to hope for some of that development. That's all I have for you guys today. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other.